breeding, and then our second lecture this week will be for foaling. As far as breeding, I'm going to talk about how to correctly perform an ultrasound on a mare, as well as how to correctly palpate. And then we're going to go into how to collect a stallion, so as though um, we're collecting a semen sample. And then how to artificially inseminate a mare and complete the lecture with how to perform an ultrasound to confirm a pregnancy. So a lot of content. I'm going to keep it very baseline. Um, I do know that a couple of you in this class have already taken reproduction and some of you are certified to artificially inseminate cattle. There's a couple of similarities and a couple of differences between cattle and horses. I actually learned on cattle first um, through the reproduction class here at Western and then I learned on horses a couple of summers ago while I was at Tarleton completing my master's. Um, in talking to Dr. O'Brien after I had completed my AI class in cattle and I was interested in breeding one of my mares, I remember I asked Dr. O'Brien, you know, can you teach me how to AI a horse? And he says, you know, I can teach a monkey how to AI a horse. It's very simple. It's very easy. Um, so as long as we're making sure that we're keeping all of our tools sterile, the process is pretty simple. Um, and a couple of comparisons you'll notice between cattle and horses, just a couple of minor differences, however important differences. To give us a little background on making sure that we have our mare prepared and ready to go into our breeding season, um, above all, any horse entering a breeding season should have be healthy. It is important to make sure the stallion or mare is up to date on all vaccinations, um, have had their hooves examined and trimmed by a quality farrier, that they get a dental evaluation and if necessary their teeth are floated. It's also important to check for parasites using a fecal egg count test and follow a deworming program which is recommended by a veterin veterinarian. It's also important to ensure that a horse's body condition score remains between the desired Haneke body condition score of 5 to 7. Our horses that are thin, as well as our horses that are over-conditioned, are going to have difficulty um, getting bred and also have difficulty maintaining a pregnancy. Um, a uterine culture can also be useful in mares prior to breeding. An annual culture can reveal the presence of pathogenic bacteria in the mare's reproductive tract before breeding attempts are started. If infection is found, then it must be treated with antibiotics prior to breeding, and treatment can be difficult, especially in older um, non-pregnant mares, and might be necessary to postpone the breeding. In lactating mares that fold earlier in the year without complications, um, it can be induced to have a short cycle just after the full heat, and before peak lactation. Um, sometimes a mare's body prefer um, producing milk to thinking about having babies again. The full heat is also a prime time to check for fluid and infection. In some mares, especially those with poor um, vulva conformation, they may also need a temporary castlex procedure, which is the surgical closing of the upper part of the vulva just after foaling to prevent new contamination um, via the aspiration of air, dirt, or debris. In the second lecture this week, when we talk about foaling, I'm going to touch a little bit on the castlex procedure. So we'll talk in more detail about that later um, this week. Um, in addition, in maiden mares, especially young ones, it can be beneficial for pre-breeding training to get them used to being transported and having those um, examinations completed. It will help to keep their stress levels down later, um, later on when we're completing the breeding season when keeping their stress low is very important to fertility. So those are a couple of things to keep in mind with our mares prior to entering the breeding season or very early in the breeding season.
The first topic that I want to talk about is how to ultrasound a mare and the importance that the ultrasound, um, the important information the ultrasound provides us with in ensuring that we get this timing right. In breeding mares and in breeding really any type of livestock, um, it's very important that we get the timing right to have a successful pregnancy. And looking at um, ultrasounding and palpating a mare, the first thing I want to do is I want to um, bag that tail. I want to wrap a vet wrap um, or other similar wrap on the base of the tail. And I want to tie that tail aside. That's going to ensure that um, I have a good view and I have good access to the different parts um, of the mare's reproductive tract in evaluation and completing my palpation and my ultrasound. As I go through the different steps of how to do so, um, you're probably going to think, man, that's simple. I could do it with my eyes closed. And it is a simple process and a very simple procedure. However, it is very, very important it is done so correctly. Even in a lot of your large-scale operations, your palpations are only completed by a veterinarian. Reason being for that is if it is not done correctly and carefully, we can very easily um, create a tear in the horse's rectum wall. If that is done, that is going to create an infection that oftentimes results in the death of our mare. So it's important that this is done correctly and exactly by the books to ensure um, that our mare is able to maintain health and is able to continue with breeding and reproduction. The first thing or first thing that I'm doing after I have my male mare prepped and ready to go um, and including in prepped and ready to go aside from tying that tail to the side um, is also to clean her off. So I can apply warm water, I can use ivory soap to clean her up. I want to make sure that I'm not using a harsh soap um, but I can use an ivory soap to clean her up. Um, to get ready for that palpation. As far as getting ready for um, the palpation, I want to make sure that I use a lube. A couple of different brands and types that we can use. On the lower left hand corner, I have two photographs of two different brands of lube that is what we typically used at the facility um, that I was learning at. And these were the lubes that we used for performing pal palpations and ultrasound. On the upper right hand photograph, you can see that I'm using a smaller tube of, of lube. This is a non-spermicidal lube. So non-spermicidal is going to be very, very important when we are AI, um, but it can also be used when we are performing an ultrasound. So in getting myself ready, I will put on a breeding sleeve. Um, if you use your right hand or your left hand, that's a personal preference. Um, different people, depending on which dominant hand you are, will use different hands. Um, so I want to make sure that I apply that lube to my knuckles. And then I can also um, put a, a fair amount um, in the palm of my hand. In preparing to enter the mare, I want to rub on the back side of my knuckles, um, down the anus, and down the vulva. Then the first thing I do in performing this evaluation is to enter the anus. In entering the anus, I am going to remove um, all of the feces that are, that are present. The importance in re removing the feces is that when I do um, provide, or perform that palpation and I want to fill the different parts of the mare's reproductive tract and anatomy, it's important to have that feces removed so I can fill those different parts. Also, when I'm performing a ultrasound, it's very important that I can lay my um, ultrasound probe flat against the rectum wall so that I am um, pushed up flesh to the different parts of the reproductive tract. So looking at the cervix and um, the uterine horns, so on and so forth. So it's important that we remove all of those feces. Um, once all of the feces have been removed, I can then perform um, a palpation to evaluate the anatomy of that reproductive tract internally. Um, and then I can also use my ultrasound machine by entering the horse with the probe 
and I can evaluate the different components of the reproductive tract again. So keep in mind at this time when we've talked about doing the palpation, the ultrasound, that we are entering the horse rectally. In discussion of ultrasound, I also want to talk about getting the timing right. The timing is so imperative to breeding in horses. The timing of ultrasounds, the ovulation induction, um, semen shipping, and insemination is very, very critical. During the heat, a mare's estrus shows um, characteristic signs of edema, so the, the fluid swelling because of the endocrine changes um, that are related to estrus. The veterinarian can detect this easily by examining the reproductive tract with an ultrasound. It is important not to give an HCG shot unless the mare shows these clear signs of heat in addition to a large follicle. So an HCG is a human um, coronic gonadotrophin hormone injection. Um, this is available and is a drug that stimulates the secretion of the mare's own luteinizing hormone. Um, if you are shipping semen, it's important to check with the stud farm first to be sure that they can ship semen that day. Um, if you are ordering chilled semen at the same time as you give the HCG injection, the semen should arrive in about 24 hours and the mare should be inseminated immediately and should likely ovulate in about 12 hours after that. To be on the safe side when dealing with the unknowns of shipping overseas or cross country, many breeders will wait until the semen is on hand and then give the HCG and inseminate. Good pregnancy rates can still be achieved with this method. So now that we know how to ultrasound our mares and a little bit of the basics on how to know when we're ready to artificially inseminate, we're going to talk about the collection process of the stud. In looking at the collection process of the stud, the first thing is to understand the AV or the artificial vagina. This is a tool that is most commonly used for semen collection from stallions for use in artificial insemination programs. The semen can be froze or used for further analysis. There are many types of artificial vaginas that are available commercially, although there are differences and they all follow the same general design format of having a tubular inner liner um, usually made of latex, which is surrounded by a fillable water jacket encased in a hard outer shell. Um, it is attachable at the distal end is some form of collection apparatus to capture the ejaculated semen, and this apparatus will often include a filter of some sort to remove the gel fraction of the ejaculant and any debris such as smegma. So smegma is just a fancy word for dirt and debris. Um, probably the two most common models seen in use um, in North America specifically are going to be the Colorado and the Missouri models. The Colorado model has been modified by many other companies, but it retains a similar basic design. Each AV model has different advantages and many tech um, Technicians, and indeed stallions, may develop a preference for one or another model. So first we're going to look at the Colorado. The Colorado is the model shown on the right hand side, so the blue one. Um, there's going to, this is going to retain water temperature longer in colder weather, so hence its name Colorado. This style of AV is often used in colder climates. It is more durable under extreme usage. The liner is cheaper to replace when it is worn or damaged. And if not too long, it allows the stallion to ejaculate well clear of the heated liner, thereby avoiding danger of sperm damage by heat shock. The second type that I wanted to discuss in some detail is the Missouri. So the Missouri is shown on the lower portion of this slide it has the Breeder's Choice cover on it. 
The Missouri is the one that I've personally used in collection procedure and is most common in this area. The Missouri is cheaper to purchase initially, it is lighter and therefore easier to handle when filled with water, and it will allow for the addition of air to make the liner tighter. It allows a less direct manual stimulation of the penis, which can be preferable to some stallions. So for the focus of this lecture, I'm going to discuss how to prepare the Missouri AV. In looking at how to build an AV, the first thing we do is to prepare our water. It's important that when we're preparing our water that it is not too cool and it is not too warm. Our semen collection, when we have that semen sample, it is going to be imperative that we keep that, that sample viable. So temperature, light, um, exposure to different, um, to different textures um, such as rubber or lube. We're going to make sure that everything has to be just right or that sample is not going to be viable. So we're going to prepare our water. We are then going to attach a spigot to the AV and fill it with water. There is a specific spout that we put onto our faucet and then we can insert that to fill our AV with water. The amount of water that we fill our AV with is going to be dependent upon our stallion. So at most breeding facilities, that stallion um, is kept on site. It is collected at the same facility all the time. So they will learn that stallion's preference. So the amount of water we add to our AV is dependent upon the preference of the stallion as far as the firmness. And when we start talking about lube, the amount of lube that we use in our AV is also going to be dependent upon the preference of the stallion. In adding our water, it's important that the water is in um, the liner and that it's not inside the AV where the stallion is going to enter. It's important that there is no water inside the AV and we need to check for firmness and then add the outside cover. So in adding the outside cover, that is the lower photograph, the breeder's choice, um, so we can apply that cover over our AV. At this point, we are now ready to fill the inside of our AV with a non-spermicidal loop. So it's very, very important at this point in our process that we use a non-spermicidal lube to keep our sample collection viable. The amount of lube that you're going to use within your AV is a little bit mind-blowing. Um, most stallions will use one to two tubes depending upon their preference. Um, the stallions that we collected at the university that I was at, we always used at least one bottle. Um, one of our stallions had a preference of using pretty much as much as we could possibly um, get in there. So that stallion we tended to collect with um, two, two bottles or two tubes of lube. In getting our lube inside of our AV, we are going to put on a breeding glove and make sure that we have lube um, throughout the entire portion. Oftentimes it's most beneficial that we actually leave that glove within the AV. That's going to help prevent um, dirt and other debris from entering our AV while we are waiting on the other preparation steps. So putting that glove into the AV is going to protect the inside after we have applied our lube. Our next step is to make up the semen collection bottle with the filter and cup and attach to the end of the AB, AV. So on the left hand side I have our um, semen collection bottle, our filter, and then also our cap that will, co that will connect it to our AV. This is attached at the distal end um, to capture the ejaculated semen. 
this apparatus is often going to include a filter. So our filter shown in the center um, is going to set on top of our collection bottle and down within it. And this filter is going to remove the gel fraction of the ejaculant. And it is also going to um, prevent any smegma from entering the sample collection. Then we can put the cap on and we are ready to connect it to our AV. Once our um, semen collection bottle is connected at the end of our AV, so the right hand end, you can see it is attached, it is important to make sure that the lube, the bottle, and all other parts are warm to avoid a temperature shock. So again, ensuring the temperature is warm so that our semen collection doesn't, is, so that our semen collection is most viable because it didn't incur a temperature shock. It's important that we keep this warm until the time of collection. After we have our AB prepared, we are then ready to prepare our stallion. The setup of a, um, a facility can be very different depending on where you're located in the country, the different type of um, breed of horse that you are dealing with, the preference of the breeding manager. A lot of things can come into play into the setup. I'm going to attach a video to this lecture so that you all can watch a temp typical um, procedure and how a stallion is collected and a lot of this will make more sense if you can see that process visually. But to go through it, um, just to go through it very quickly, in preparing the stud we first want to tease him. Oftentimes we will have a tease mare that is in breeding stocks. We will allow the stallion to approach her. Many stallions, again, are going to have different preferences in what they need um, as far as a tease so that they can drop down. Some of them are going to be very physical. Um, some of them are going to nibble. Some of them will squill. Different things that they are going to need as far as that tease is going to go. <clears throat> Once our stallion has been teased and he has dropped down, we are then going to wash the stallion with warm water and clean paper towels or cotton. It is important that we do not contaminate as we are cleaning the stallion. We want to make sure that we are cleaning from the top to the end of the penis. So top to end is going to ensure that the dirt and debris that we are rubbing um, down the penis as we are cleaning, that it is not, we're not just cross contaminating. The video that I selected to show you all, I know they continuously use one paper towel. The way that I taught is that when we are washing the stallion, that we do one swipe, we drop that paper towel, um, we collect another paper towel from our warm water bucket, and then we complete that process until our stallion is clean. Although we are using warm water, um, the fact that we are touching the stallion as far as cleaning him, sometimes that will cause them to draw back up and they will need to be teased again before they are ready to complete their collection. So after we have them clean, we're then going to let them approach that tease mare and tease again. The point they are dropped down, um, different stallions will have different signals that they are ready to collect. Um, at the point of which we get those signals from that stallion, which again is just going to be observed from different, um, the repetition of collecting that stallion time and time again. Once that stallion is ready to collect, we are then going to allow them to mount the phantom. Um, here's a couple of images of a phantom. So this, the phantom is going to simulate that the stallion is mounting the mare. In looking at the right-hand photograph, you can see that this phantom um, is shifted to the right-hand side. So there is somewhat of an opening provided on the left-hand side. Reason being for that is as our stallion approaches that phantom, we have a handler that is leading that stallion up onto the stantum, phantom. As the stallion mounts the phantom, we then have an individual that is holding the AV. The individual holding the AV 
in the setup of how this phantom is, is going to be on the left hand side. So the individual with the AV is going to be on the left hand side of the phantom. As that stallion approaches and mounts the phantom, they are going to go in with their right arm and scoop the penis of the stallion and direct it entry into the, uh, into the AV. Once the stallion has entered the AV, um, you will know that that collection period is complete when the stallion begins to flag his tail. So flagging of the tail is an indicator that the stallion is finishing his collection. Um, at that point, the stallion will then be complete with the collection and will begin to back off of the phantom. As they back off of the phantom, it's important that you do not pull off the AV, but that you let the stud pull out of the AV. After the collection is complete, we now have our semen sample um, in our collection cup. Then we are ready to use our extender mix. So the extender is going to be important in maintaining the viability, but also making that collection um, go a longer ways. After the extender is mixed um, with the semen, then it is ready to either use for farm artificial insemination to be shipped, frozen, or further processed. Um, in the right hand side, th these are actually the tubes um, that the semen is put into that is ready for transportation. This is a photograph um, of Yellow Roan of Texas collection. The empty one is actually the one that I used to breed my mare. The full one um, is because they gave us two doses. So these containers will fit down into an equitainer and can be used for transportation um, of that collection or of the semen. So I touched on a little bit there that once we have that extender mix that we can prepare for farm AI or shipping and freezing. So there are three different types of semen that we can use when breeding mares. There is a number of pros and cons of each kind of semen presentation, whether it be fresh, chilled, or frozen. And this must be um, weighed against the reproductive strengths and weaknesses of one's mare and or stallion. For fresh semen, this undergoes minimal or no processing and always has the highest fertility rate. It is longer lasting once inseminated, and the inseminated mare requires less frequent vet checks prior to conception, and it's usually the least expensive method. However, as it can be transport however, it cannot be transported and must be used almost immediately. Mares and stallions need to be at the same location for this insemination um, option to be available. The next one is chilled semen. I would go ahead and bet that this is most, most popular. I know in, in my situation, um, this is the uh, semen presentation that I selected to go with when breeding my mare was chilled semen. Um, mare owners ordered chilled semen and can have it transported inexpensively overnight by a carrier or postal service using a styrofoam box or the more cost-intensive um, equitainer. It usually retains good viability for 24 to 30 hours, plus an additional 24 to 48 hours once the mare has been inseminated. However, ordering, shipping, and delivery must be very well managed to respect the semen viability, time constraints, and the mare owner must order new semen if the mare does not ovulate within 24 to 48 hours of insemination. So looking at exactly how well managed you must, um, must have all of the ordering, shipping, and delivery of this um, chilled semen, my mare, we evaluated her on Friday, and we knew that she was going to ovulate on a Sunday. However, my stud that I selected to breed to, he didn't collect on Sundays, and nor was I going to be able to have my semen shipped 
on a Sunday and get it the same day. So luckily, I was only four hours um, from the location of the stallion. So I was able to hop in my truck on Sunday morning. Um, there was a lot of special exceptions and discussion with the stallion owner and the individual that was running the uh, breeding barn that he was located at. Um, she was willing to collect him on a Sunday, allow me to drive up to her facility to transport my semen collection. So she collected him on a Sunday. I drove four hours to Oklahoma. I was living in Texas at the time, drove four hours, got my sample, and then drove four hours back so that we could breed our mare or breed my mare that Sunday evening. So must be very well managed to make this option work of chilled semen. And our third option is the use of frozen semen. The liquid nitrogen takes can preserve frozen semen for years, which allows it to be ready and on hand whenever the mare ovulates. Um, special transporters known in the U.S. as dry nitrogen shippers can deliver frozen semen worldwide, and new one-way shipping containers provide a less expensive and more convenient way to transport frozen semen. However, even so, frozen semen remains the most expensive and least successful artificial insemination method. Not all stallions can have their semen frozen or even chilled, and up to 20% of breeding stallions have sperm that are easily um, hampered by processing and cold temperatures. Sometimes the extender, which dilutes um, and nourishes the sperm, can be ingested to improve the survival rate. But if your stallion is amongst that 20%, it is important to encourage mare owners to accept it fresh. We are now ready to jump into our information regarding artificial insemination technique. I know one time um, initially when talking about collection, I did mention breeding stocks. Breeding stocks are going to have a number of benefits in a facility. The breeding stocks photographed here, this is actually a teaching university now. However, previously it was um, a breeding facility where multiple mares were being bred day in and day out and four stallions were located on this facility at minimum at all times. Um, the breeding stocks are beneficial in putting our tease mares so that our stallion, so that end one closest to us here, we could put our mare in there, our tease mare, and that way our stallions could um, smell them, they could interact with them, but we wouldn't have to worry about our stallion mounting that mare per se. Um, these stocks are also beneficial in working with young foals. They're beneficial in if we need to breed a mare, but she has a foal on her, then we can put that mare and foal side by side in these breeding stocks. So a number of benefits um, to use of this facility. Um, for looking at artificial insemination, we are going to lead our mare into this breeding stock, and then we will be able to perform the AI. So we have our mare in our breeding stock. We already have her tail bagged and tied aside. And then we are ready to wash that mare with ivory soap. We want to wash this mare two to four times. This is when we're going to have a little bit of difference um, between our cattle and our horses. Our horses, it is very, very imperative that we keep everything very sterile. So that's where this is our first step in making sure that we are keeping everything sterile is to wash that mare um, two to four times. And it is important to use our knuckles and clean inside out in order to not contaminate. It is then we will dry well with a sterile paper towels. Now that our mare is prepared, we are ready to open our glove. Again, it's very important that we keep this glove sterile. So in opening our glove, our breeding gloves will be in individually um, wrapped packages. We can open that glove and holding it by the corner, we can put that glove on. 
a lot of times, I know even myself, um, when I was breeding, you think, oh, I'm not going to touch anything. I won't forget. I'll keep this hand clean. I think it's most beneficial to keep that hand elevated up in the air so that we keep that um, glove very sterile. And it's important that we do not touch this glove to anything. We are then ready to open the semen tube on the end with the rubber stopper. So this is going to be um, the green end of the tube. You can see that I have that down um, at the end, so not the portion that is entering the mare. And it is important that we only pull this um, insemination tube out of the plastic when we are ready to artificially inseminate. It's again important that we don't touch this insemination tube to anything. On the left hand side, you can see that I have my pointer finger and my middle finger at the end of that rod, and then I have the rest of my hand um, cupped around the rod. This is going to be the correct way that I want to enter the mare to place my rod. Whereas the second photograph on the right, you can see I have my hand slid down a couple of inches on that rod. It's going to be very important that when you enter the mare's vulva, that you will um, enter with your fingers at the tip of your rod. So this is when those of you that know how to artificially inseminate cattle, again, you're going to notice a difference. We are going to insert our forearm into the horse's vulva. We're not going to insert the rod into the vulva and insert the um, offhand into the rectum in order to manipulate the reproductive tract. Make sure you make note of that. We are going to enter the mare um, with our forearm entering the vulva um, into the vagina canal. As far as making sure the semen has minimum exposure to light and outside temperatures, we want to put the semen dose in the syringe on the end of the breeding pipe. So in looking at um, use of the breeding syringe, you can see a breeding syringe on the top that has yet to been open, and in the bottom photograph, that top syringe is a breeding syringe. What is the main no difference that you notice between the breeding syringe um, and our regular syringe on the bottom? The main difference that you should notice is the use of rubber. A breeding syringe does not use rubber because rubber is actually going to um, kill our sperm. Our sperm. So just like we want to use non-spermicidal lube, it's very important that we do not use rubber in our syringe because that's going to kill our sample. So main difference there between a breeding syringe and a, um, a regular syringe is our breeding syringe does not have rubber. So like I talked about, our forearm is going to enter the vulva um, and the vagina canal of the mare. In doing so, we want to go slow and carefully. We are going to locate the cervix. We are going to open it with two fingers, ensuring that we can slide our um, insemina insemination tube or our pipe through the cervix. Now, our horse is not going to have rings of the cervix, similar to our cow. So once we locate the opening of the cervix, it's going to be very simple to place that, um, place our it's going to be very simple to place our insemination tube. So once we have it placed, we do not to want to push it um, in too far to where there is resistance. So just lightly applying pressure um, and placing that rod um, through the cervix. We will then inject the semen um, from our insemination syringe. So we will then inject the semen. After we have injected the semen, it's important that we pull off the syringe, that we pull back so that we just have air in our syringe, and that we put that syringe back on and inject air. This is going to ensure that all of the semen 
It is pushed through our insemination tube and is entering the mare that we don't have wasted semen that still remains in our tube when we complete our insemination. Um, then we can pull pipe all the way back to our fingertips and then pull our hand out of the mare with the pipe and clean the mare off. Now that the breeding process is complete, um, there's a number of reasons that we may choose to give a secondary dose um, we also want to ensure that ovulation has occurred, so a reason that we may ultrasound the mare. And then eventually we do want to confirm the pregnancy. In confirming the pregnancy on the left and right photograph, both, I have a ultrasound machine where we have confirmed the pregnancy of this mare. So you can see that there is a line drawn across, drawn across a black circle. That black circle is the only way that we can confirm a pregnancy by using a ultrasound machine. So that is a visual of what a confirmed pregnancy is going to look like. When you're considering breeding, it's very important that you understand the terms of your contract. I know personally I had to have a written notice from a veterinarian that my mare was confirmed in full. Um, there was different points throughout the pregnancy that we had to confirm that they were still in full and that they had a healthy pregnancy um, and then also had to have confirmation of a live foal on the ground in order to recognize the terms and conditions of my contract. Another thing to keep in mind when confirming a pregnancy, I know these two I showed you the visuals of what the ultrasound shows to confirm a pregnancy. However, in palpating that mare and evaluating the reproductive anatomy, you can fill the uterine horns and confirm if the mare is pregnant. Um, I do have a video that I'm going to try to attach. I'm having a little difficulty with it. Um, but it is a video of the veterinarian discussing how the uterine horns feel different in my mare when we were able to confirm her pregnancy. So I know in looking at this video that half of it is going to be cut off. However, listen to the audio as Dr. Dustin Doris talks about how we know that this mare is in fact in full. Just here, are we learning so many new things Okay, so today? this is her left yeah. horn. Like, I'm just off of her ovary, so I'm up. 18-year-old maiden mare. What Wait, did we breed her to? You don't just breed uh, them just for shits and giggles? Yellow yeah, Rona, Texas. I thought it was a pretty color. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> That's right. Just me, are we learning so many new things Okay, so today? this is her left yeah. horn. Like, I'm just off of her ovary, so I'm up high on the left. And see how toned that thing is? And see how it's just it just has that continued shape. Like, I can mm -hmm. feel that in my hand. I pick that up and drop it in my hand. Okay, and there's the right side. See how much bigger it gets? Yeah. So you can feel that. Okay. Like a big rope. Yep, and but oh, look, so I'm still so all the right horn, right mm -hmm. horn, right mm -hmm. horn, still right horn, but it gets a whole lot smaller mm -hmm. as I come up. How many days are we out now? Fourteen. Okay. And like she was a good breed, like she ovulated mm -hmm. that night, didn't yep. she? Mm -hmm. Same as Kelly. Yeah, we nailed her. Indian was questionable. At this point, you should have the majority of the information that you need to complete your week 11A assignment. As mentioned, I have tagged two additional YouTube videos. One shows the collection process of a stallion, and the other shows the artificial insemination process of a mare. Um, unfortunately, it's the fall. We're not in breeding season. We couldn't go um, to any facilities or locations to watch these um, hands-on. So we've got a close second, and I've attached a couple of videos um, that may help you to understand this process a little better.